let's see experimental setup. How does the polarimeter works? How in a lab we can decide whether the given compound is optically active or inactive. So what is the setup inside the polarimeter and what we have to do to know whether the compound is active or inactive. First of thing, we are going to see whether the compound is optically active or inactive, what is its optical activity, means something we are going to do experiment with light. So first important requirement is we need a light source. We need a light source. Here comes the light. So first we are taking a light source. From a normal light source, the light which comes from a normal light source is polychromatic. A normal light source is polychromatic means it contains the light particles of different wavelengths. Chroma is something related with color. So a light containing particles of so many colors, so many wavelengths is called as polychromatic light. And also when a light particle propagates in certain direction, it also vibrates in other directions. So along with the propagation, the light particle is vibrating in different directions. So a light particle, when it propagates, it also vibrates. So it vibrates in different directions. So such type of light beam coming through a light source is called a polychromatic. Polychromatic and non polarized light. Non polarized light. Non polarized light means it is vibrating in different directions. The direction of vibrations are not polarized in any particular direction. And polychromatic means it consists the light particles of different wavelength, different energy. So for this experiment, what we require is a light having all the particles of same energy because suppose any compound if affects the light, any compound if affects the light, the effect on the light particles having different energy will be different and so at the end it will be very difficult to conclude how much that compound is affecting the light. So, the experimental requirement is, will not require light particle of some particular energy. And for that, we pass the light through certain thing which is called as monochromator. 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 Something through which when light is passed, something through which when light particle passes, it absorbs all the wavelengths except one. Except one wavelength, all other wavelengths get absorbed in the monochromator. And when the light particles is passed through the monochromator, the light coming out will be of single wavelength. Will be of single wavelength, but again it will vibrate in all particle all possible directions. So such a light which comes out after passing through monochromator is called monochromatic. Is monochromatic non-polarized non-polarized light. Monochromatic because now all the light particles are of same energy and non-polarized because still the particles are vibrating in all the directions. Now, this light is also not sufficient for our experiment related to optical activity. So, what we do is, we pass this monochromatic non-polarized light through a polarizer. Through a polarizer. Now, what this polarizer is? Polarizer generally used here is Nikon prism. Now what this polarizer is? Polarizer is something through which when light particles are passed, when light beam is passed, the particles vibrate only in some particular direction. 
other vibrations are cut and all the light particles coming out through this polarizer they will be vibrating only in one direction and such a light is called as plane polarized plane polarized light this is the actual requirement this is the actual requirement of our experiment we require the light which is monochromatic and plane polarized light now this plane polarized monochromatic plane polarized light is then passed through is then passed through a chamber sample chamber sample chamber in this sample chamber we are having the solution of compound of which we are going to measure the optical activity in this light chamber what will be having will be having sample of the compound for which we are going to measure the optical activity so the light will pass through this sample and after passing through the sample there will be a recorder there will be a recorder where the reading will be recorded recorder where we can see what is going to happen to to those light particles now what observation we may get on the recorder we can have three different observations what are these observations which which we can have on the recorder is one case is that light when passes through the sample comes out unaffected means as it goes in the sample same way it is coming out without any change so if the sample is not at all affecting the light if a sample is not at all affecting the light we can say this is optically in active means light is passing through the sample chamber and the light which comes out from the sample chamber it is not at all getting affected means the sample is not affecting the light means the sample here the compound here which is taken in the sample chamber is optically inactive what other observations we may get we may also get observation that the light after passing the sample the direction of vibration changes in direction of vibration changes and two things may happen either it rotates anti clockwise or it may rotate clockwise now if the light rotates either clockwise or anti clockwise we say the sample which was present in sample chamber is optically active so if light after passing through the sample chamber its direction of rotation vibration changes we say the sample the compound in the sample chamber is optically active now optical activity may be again of two types as i told here what happens if the light particle do not rotate at all the direction of vibration do not changes means theta is going to be 0 degree on the polarimeter we will get reading 0 degree it means light is not getting rotated so the compound is optically inactive on the other hand if we get the observation theta is positive as in this case theta is equal to positive we can see here this angle this angle is theta and if theta is positive we say the compound is dextro rotatory dextro rotatory dextro rotatory and dextro rotatory compounds are shown by small d or plus sign on the other hand if the direction of rotation is anti clockwise theta observed rotation will be coming out to be negative and theta if comes negative we say the sample the compound taken in sample is levo rotatory and if the sample is levo rotatory it is denoted by small l or minus sign 
So, in this way, by this experiment, by placing the compound in the polarimeter, we can know whether the compound is optically inactive or active. This is not rotating the light. These two are rotating the light. Now, if it is not rotating the light, we say it is optically inactive. If the sample is rotating the light, we can say it is optically active. If the reading comes to be positive, it is dextrorotatory. And if reading theta value comes to be negative, we say the compound is never rotatory. So, suppose we are keeping a compound A in the sample chamber. And on keeping compound A in the sample chamber, we are getting the reading theta is equal to 0. It means compound is A is optically inactive. Now, in the next case, we are taking compound B, we are placing it in the sample chamber, we are getting reading theta in some positive values. It means the compound is optically active and it is dextrorotatory. If some other compound we are taking C and theta is coming to be a negative value, negative value, there is some rotation but negative, so it is optically active and it is levorotatory. So, Optically inactive compound and optically active compounds are optical isomers. These two compounds will be optical isomers. If a particular compound is optically active, it can be dextro or it can be levo. If sometimes it is dextro and other compound is levo, those two compounds will also be optical isomers provided their molecular formula and structure are same. So, this is how Experimentally, we can predict whether the compound is optically active or inactive, how much it is optically active, how much it will rotate the light, what can be the relation between the two compounds by seeing the value of theta and direction and magnitude. So that we'll see what can be the different relation between the optical isomers that we'll see later. Now we can know experimentally how to decide whether the compound is optically active or the given compound is optically inactive.